Hello friends and welcome back. Today's video is going to be going over how to start off making an RPG. We'll be making a flat world for our player to run around on, dealing with all of the controls to make him be able to move forward, backwards, left, and right, as well as creating a jump script. So if you like this content, please give us a like, subscribe to find more videos on this, and let's get started. Right, so the first thing that we're going to need to do is to install a floor into our scene. So, all we have to do to do that is go to Game Object, create a 3D object, and then we're going to make it a cube. This cube is pretty small, so we're going to first position it in the center of our world, and then we'll make it so that it's about 500 by 500 in the X and Z. Don't worry about the Y, Y just needs to be one. So it's not way too tall. All right, beautiful. We have a brand new plane. Let's name it ground. Now we're going to create a player. So let's add a capsule. This will be our player just for now. He is in the floor, that's not good. So let's try and fix that. Rename him player so he knows who he is and then raise him up by 1.5. So he stands on top of the floor that we have created for him. So at this point, our player here, we're gonna call him Bob, eh, let's call him player, needs a script so that we can tell him what he's going to do. So go into projects and we're going to create a new folder. And we're going to call it scripts. This helps us keep everything kind of nice, neat, and organized. So in the script folder, we will create a new C-sharp script. We'll name it player controller. And double click that, let's go into there. So to start off with, we want to make it so that our player can move. So in order to do that, we have to create a reference to our player. And our player is a rigid body because we're controlling its movement, its physics in the game. Now normally we'd use the update field. However, for physics stuff, we want to be able to use the fixed update method. And the first thing we need to do is get an input that we can mess with to make it so that they can move and we can track that movement. So it's going to be a vector three because it can move in three different directions, X, Y, and Z. We'll name it player input. And then we're going to use our player input to store the input that we get from our controller. Now we're going to use the get axis because just like on a Xbox controller where you have kind of that thumbstick which can have a left, right, up and down and it's not just an on or off like a button, right? It's an axis that can go in between several different values. So for our left and right, we're going to use the horizontal axis just like the left and right on a thumb pad. For our Y, since we're not going up at all or jumping yet, we'll make that a zero. And then for the other input, we'll have the get axis as the vertical. And that's the same as using the vertical in the joystick. What's cool about this is that it will actually take the ASWD or the left, right, up and down keys and use these as the input. Now all that is left to do is to actually apply all that input into our beautiful player so that he starts flying around the world without a care in the world. So we change the player's velocity to equal the player input. Let's go test it out. Make sure that we add the script to our player we also have to make sure that our player has a rigid body component on it, which it does not yet. So add component and rigid body. As soon as you do that, you can click on the little dot thingy and then select player, which is a rigid body to be the player in our controller. Start the game and I spelt horizontal wrong. Okay, all right, let's try that again. And he works kind of all right so we have a couple problems here first problem is when he tries to move he falls over and just rolls around like a sloth 
Second problem, he doing it really slow. That's not fun. I want him to be able to move kind of fast and also not trip all over himself. So let's try solving those problems. I'm also gonna move this camera around just a little bit because I didn't like the way he looked. It wasn't his most photogenic side. So I'm gonna move it up a little bit and then rotate a bit so that I can see him kind of nicer from a like top over looking down like his god that I am. Now the first thing that we're going to do is freeze his constraint for rotation. It's going to make it so that he does not rotate in the X and the Z axis. We want to leave Y alone just in case we want him to be able to rotate and turn around the Y axis. So that's like looking left and right and whatnot. But the X and Z would make him flop over. So let's see if he can move now. And he does and he does not fall over. So sweet, first problem solved. He does not flop over and trip over himself. Now let's get back into it and figure out in the code how we can make him move just a little bit faster. Inside here we have the player input. The get access at the moment is giving us some form of data, but we're not quite sure what that is yet. So let's use a debug statement to log out what that actual parameter is giving us. And then we can see how much we have to adjust it by in order to make it something that's usable. So now as I'm hitting the left and right button, I can see inside the console that it goes in between negative one and one. Negative one is left, one is right. And it doesn't just go from zero to one. There's like a little buffering that happens. Kind of goes zero, then 0 0.3, 0 0.8, 0 0.9, and then one. So that's really handy to know. We know that the value is giving us between uh, negative one and one. So let's go in, and I think I want to make this maybe about 10 times faster. So we'll multiply this input times 10. All right, that's awesome. Let's save and see if it works. Hooray! Bob here is moving super fast. He actually looks like he has a little bit of life left in him. But the sad part is that we lose him as soon as he goes off camera. So let's make it so the camera will actually follow him now. All we have to do is drag that camera and click it onto the player. And that will make it a child of the player. So now wherever the player moves, the camera will follow. Now, because our world is super boring, it doesn't actually look like he's moving around at all, but we can see in the position up over there that the player is in fact moving and the camera is just following him around perfectly. My world, however, looks super boring and that's not fun. So let's go over into the asset store and get ourselves an asset to make our world look a bit nicer. So I'm going to go to prototype grid, which is a completely free and super handy asset. And it'll give us basically this texture to be able to put on whatever we want so that we can see whether or not our guy is moving. It's completely free. Go ahead and just purchase it and then hit download. We don't really need a demo, but we want all the other resources and uh, meshes that go with this. So go ahead and hit import. As soon as that imports, it'll go into our third party grid box resources and then materials and prototype. And there's all our materials that we can put on. You can see there's a whole lot of colors. So let's try throwing it on our floor to see what happens. That's better, I guess, sort of. I mean, it's kind of big. Uh, it looks like the that one tile is filling up my entire 500 by 500 landscape there. It's, I mean, yeah, it works, but it still doesn't look great. So let's try and make it look a little bit better. We're gonna click on this and then go into the shader property of our prototype green mesh that we put onto this. So click on there and then scroll down. You'll notice the tiling. Let's set that to uh, 10, I guess. By 10. Now you can see it makes one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten 10 of those by one. Let's set the Y to 10. And now we have a 10 by 10 grid of those that fills up our entire space. Not bad, much better, but Bob still feels a little bit small in this area. Let's bump that number up to maybe 50. There we go. This feels much nicer. Bob doesn't feel so lost and small in this cold, unforgiving world. 
With that, Bob is now jealous of his surroundings. So what we're going to do is go in, let's zoom in, take a look at Bob. Nope, not that close. Say six feet away from me, please. And we're going to click on a nice shiny gold. Now Bob has some bling. He looks pretty nasty. Um, yeah, look at that. He's happy. So weird pill capsule looking thing. Anyways, he can move forward. He can move back. He can move left. Now right. Now let's see if he can move up and down. So let's try adding a jump script so that he can actually move and bounce around. So first off, we have to figure out if we are pressing the jump button. So this is actually gonna be a button because it's just an on or off, one or zero, true or false. It's a binary decision, not an axis. So which is why we're using the button. So that button is going to be the jump button. You will take care of all of that mapping for us. And then if we press the jump button, we want the player to have a force added to them in the upward direction. So in here, we have a vector that allows us to set it in the X, Y, or Z. Up is the Y, so we'll do zero for everything except for the Y, in which let's try about 20. I add the F in there because it's a float. Now this also has the ability to set what type of force we're going to use by calling a force mode. Acceleration, we'll add continuous acceleration to the rigid body. That sounds like a, that's not how I jump. I don't continuously get acceleration when I jump. That's a little bit too Superman for me. Force, we'll add a continuous, there's that continuous force again. That's not great. We, that, that we're not trying to make them fly. Impulse, instantaneous force. Now that is how I jump. I don't know how you jump. If you jump with continuous velocity, do let me know and send me a video so I can believe you. I don't think I will believe you. So we're gonna select import, impulse. Let's save that and give it a shot. That's, that's kind of disappointing. All right, so we have at least one problem. I'm thinking two. Nope, there's three problems that I can see. One, he does not jump up a lot unless I press the button a lot in which he continuously jumps up. Again, way too Superman for our friend Bob here. We want him to just jump like a normal guy, a normal pleb. So what we're going to do is, also if we notice, he's kind of just slowly going down. He's not like descending at a normal rate. So that's not great. And he also doesn't jump very far up unless we press the jump button a ton of times. So let's try solving those. Now the reason why he's falling kind of slow, if we look at our player input, it's resetting the velocity of our player to, the, to match all of the inputs. Now our velocity of the Y is zero, which means that every single time the frame updates, he resets his velocity to zero. So he doesn't start accelerating downward as he's falling further and further. He just kind of falls a little bit and then stops falling and then falls a little bit and stops following. That's not how a gravity curve works. He is... So what we need to do in order to counteract that is we want to set the zero instead to the player's current velocity in the y direction. That way, as he's falling, he'll look for the last velocity in the y and then also continue adding gravity to it as he goes. So this works. He now can jump super high. That's, I think I hit the button a couple of times. All right, cool. So now he has the ability to jump really high solves that problem. Now I can change how he jumps by either changing his code and saying 20, setting that down to like 10. But I think at this point, our boy here is a little bit too light. So we're gonna change his mass to be a little bit higher. Remember the force mode is a instant that is using its mass to calculate, right? So let's change his mass to uh, 3.5 maybe. Let's try it. That's not quite, that's not quite enough. I think he's, no, nah, let's give him maybe 
Seems better, but seems a little laggy. Let's make it a nice even three, and we'll be happy there. Oop, press the button a few too many times. Sweet. That seems pretty good. I'm happy with that. So now that we have that set, remember, because we're currently playing, it will reset its mass as soon as we're done. Any changes that we make when the game is playing get reset. So change that mass back to three now that the game has stopped playing. And let's go back into the code and see if we can mess with this a little bit more to make it so that he cannot jump infinitely up into the air and go Superman on us. Okay, back in the code. We have to make a statement that figures out whether or not this guy is touching the ground. And if he is touching the ground, then we can jump. So we'll need to create a variable to keep track of that. It'll be private because no one else needs to know about it except for just us and this script. And it is going to be a type boolean. So a yes or no, true or false type variable. And then we're going to name it can jump because I'm bad at naming things. So in order to set that, we are going to look at a pre-made function that Unity comes with that can check whether or not we are colliding with another object. This is called private void on collision enter. And you can see it will call and fire this every single time a collider or rigid body is touching another one. So our player is a a rigid body and has a collider, capsule collider in this case, and our ground also has a box collider on it. So when these two colliders are touching, this script should run. So on collision enter, we want to say that can jump will equal to true because he's touching the ground and we're happy about that. So we want to let him jump. Now we have to worry about the opposite case which is when the collision, see if you can guess it, wait for it, exits. So when the collision exits, that means that they are no longer touching. They are no longer bros. They are not happy with each other. So when they are not touching, we can make it so can jump equals false so that the player cannot in fact jump. So now let's add that logic to our jump function. So if we get the button down to jump and we can jump, then do the jump. Let's go test that. Moves around and he jumps. And no matter how many times I smash this jump button, he only jumps when we're touching the ground. Awesome. We have a completely working prototype. That's not bad for a day's work. In the next episode of this, we're going to go into how to make it so that this character can turn. Because right now he can't see to his left, right, or back. Just kind of what's in front of him. And that's no fun, especially if we want to interact with other objects or players or be able to, you know, enter a house or something. 